Some of my earliest videos were about how Lathe, a moon of Joule, seemed to be an impossible case. No amount of salt in the oceans could explain that they are liquid. People mentioned that tidal heating could maybe explain the liquid oceans, but that came out inconclusive. Others mentioned that Joule itself could be radioactive. Now, before even trying to calculate how much uranium, for example, will be needed to raise a lace surface temperature, I already know that any radioactive isotope is way too rare for this to be even close to possible. Some of you mentioned that it is more likely that Joule has some kind of radiation belts similar to Jupiter. But as we know from Jupiter, even though the radiation inside these belts is very, very dangerous, it does not provide enough energy to melt the icy moons and create like liquid oceans. Really, if you want this radiation to melt ice, you have a way bigger problem than some kind of icy moon surface. Even the Kerbals would not dare to venture in such an environment. But this channel is about pushing the limits and venturing into the impossible, just to see what happens. So, what if Joule had something like a core made of uranium, providing radiation as a source of energy? Well, if we assume the uranium to be located somewhere in the core of Joule, it would probably go critical. I mean, the amount of pressure inside of such a planet would be enough probably. I don't know how much pressure is needed to have uranium go critical, but I can imagine the inside of a planet would. But let's ignore that. If it were found in core, I would imagine that all the radiation would be absorbed by the surrounding dense material of the planet. This would heat up the planet, which would result in the emittance of thermal radiation similar to that of a black body. And in so many videos I've used this equation of black body radiation to explain things. The equation keeps popping up and I cannot help it, but this time it is a bit different. In other videos I have assumed that the power input of the system was purely from the host star. But now we have radiation as our secondary source. I want to know how much radiation is needed to heat up lathe to 277 Kelvin. From Lathe's perspective, the input is the light from Kerbal, and this is the fraction of the light that arrives at the moon. And this is the thermal radiation emitted by Joule through the radioactive core. And this side is the output of Lathe. If we rearrange this equation, we have an expression for the power being emitted by Joule itself due to radiation. Like us, all these variables on the right, like the temperature of Lathe and Kerbal, and some other things, are already known. This gives us a required power equal to this. The things that I approach in my videos make use of a lot of math things. And it might be useful to catch up on a few things in an effective way. And this is why I recommend Brilliant, who are so kind to sponsor this video. With Brilliant, you learn by doing. They have thousands of interactive lessons in things like math, physics, programming and AI. The cool thing about Brilliant is that their approach to learning is much more effective than watching regular lecture videos. And it also helps you by developing actual critical thinking skills, rather than having you memorize a few sciencey facts. Brilliant also has a streak system with leagues that help you develop a learning habit. Something that I use all the time is my knowledge in math and geometry. And that is why I recommend their course called Measurements. It contains everything you need to know about math and geometry, which is essential when doing science. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash curious or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off of an annual premium subscription. So how much uranium will be required to explain this activity? Well, the activity of some radioactive material is expressed as A equal to N divided by the half-life of the material. A is the amount of decay reactions per second. N is the total number of atoms of the decaying material that need to be present and the half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of the material present to have decayed into other things. We know that one decay reaction of uranium-238 gives off this much energy. So, this many reactions would be needed to reach the previously calculated power output. This is our A. We also know that the decay rate of uranium is 4.5 billion years. Plug this in and we know how many atoms we need, and thus how much mass this is. This gives us a total mass of uranium that is 33% the mass of Joule, and this is absolutely insane. But as some of you might already have noticed, this is not the complete picture. When uranium-238 decays, it decays into thorium-234, helium and some energy. Thorium also decays in turn. 
and so do the products of that reaction and this keeps going until the products are stable. All of these reactions are happening at the same time. So this results in a power output that is a few times higher than just the simple reaction shown before. So correcting for this, this means that we need an amount of uranium that is about 4.1% the mass of Joule. And this is still very unrealistic. But at least I guess we know what will be required in such an extreme case. If it would not go critical anyways. And I also mentioned that Joule should heat up due to all of this. And if we calculate that, we get a surface temperature of 828 Kelvin, assuming the same radius. But this increase in temperature would result in a puffier planet, thus increasing the radius, which would then lower the temperature needed. And this is a feedback loop until it would find a new balance or equilibrium. And this would require some modeling to get the exact numbers on this, but that is too much work for me now. I have other videos concerning this lathe problem, so check those out if you want. If you want to be notified when another video of mine comes out, then subscribe.